Hey friends, this is gonna be another one of those UI audits that I stopped doing for a while, but I guess they're gonna be back soon. And I got a couple of screenshots from one of the community members, so I decided to take a look and make some very quick, very simple adjustments. Starting with the splash screen, I think that photo is a little bit too busy towards the bottom, so if this is the logo, it's probably best to place it near the top especially since we have some nice white space there that makes the logo more visible. Okay, let's go to the second screen. And this screen is a standard grid view. So the first thing that we want to do here is to modify the background to be white. For all your initial projects, avoid colorful backgrounds because they're really difficult to pull off. Now I'm gonna try a couple of things here. So for now, I'm just gonna paste in the photo from the detail view onto this view and just place it near the bottom, but we might not really use this. So this is more of a way to see what we can do with this screen to make it a little bit more interesting. If you have any elements that are pure black, which is the color 000, then it's really good to actually add a hint of the main primary color of the app to them and I'm gonna pick blue. So in this case, I'm gonna change the border of the search field to be a light gray with a little bit of a desaturated blue in it. And since the add to cart button has rounded corners and so do the actual grid elements, it's really good for that form field to also be rounded. So it's looking better already. Now let's modify the screen title that says sneakers, cause this can be a lot bigger. It can be a lot more visible. So I'm gonna play around with a couple of options here until I'm satisfied. Generally we want something big, but not too thick. And big fonts like that need a little bit more space. So I'm just gonna pull the menu down a little bit and then let's decrease the size of the magnifying glass, which is the search field in the field because it's a little bit too big for the height of the field. And while we're at it, let's decrease the size of the icons next to it as well so they match visually. We want them to have roughly similar weight. And obviously the best case scenario would be if we could color those icons to be a tiny bit lighter, but since they're bitmaps, it's not really that easy here. Okay, we're not gonna use a photo on the top because it just simply looks too busy. And this is navigation, so this is important. So I'm gonna fill it with a light blue color first, and then let's grab those four dots that are supposedly showing that it's a carousel, and let's actually remove them because they're not necessary. In most cases, a screen like that would be simply scrolling up and down, so you'll be able to see all of those shoes. So we don't really need the dots. Now let's create a lighter variation of that blue background under the actual cards. And this is gonna make them stand out a little bit more because the object that is closer to the user is lighter. So if we have a slightly darker background in the background, then if we change the background color of these elements to white, they're gonna be naturally perceived as closer, which is basically what we want because they're floating on top. And I'm also gonna add a very subtle blue tinted shadow to them. If you want a nice looking shadow, make sure that the blur value is double the Y value. And then the color matches the color scheme of the app. Okay, now make the entire card taller, add a title of it, so maybe the shoe name, and have the price, but it should be left aligned. And also, if the photo has rounded corners, it should have rounded corners that match the corners of the card underneath, but the bottom two corners should be completely squared off, should be sharp. So you can modify individual corners that way. So once I have the style, I can duplicate it, but I want 16 points on every side, the distances. So you see that the cards are a little bit too narrow actually, so I want them wider. So let's increase their size first and then let's duplicate it for the other two cards at the bottom. While we're at it, if we want to show that the user can scroll, we can add another set of those cards that is cut out by the bottom of the screen. Okay, now let's make some better tabs. I'm gonna add a rectangular rounded cornered blue background under the selected tab and for the remaining tabs I'm gonna use the white background with a slightly blue shadow that we have for the cards already and I'm gonna place them at eight points from each other because they are a group. The shadow under those white cards was a little bit too strong so I decreased the opacity of it and also for the main font, it's really good if it also has that little hint of the main color inside. So 
So I made the main title font a little bit lighter, a lighter gray, but still pretty dark and added a hint of blue to it. Now once we have a nice big title font established, you can copy the properties or copy the layer style and paste it onto the detail screen for the name of the shoe, because this is the most important part here. Then let's make the price similar in thickness to the price that we had before, but of course the font has to be slightly bigger and we can make it blue. Okay, for now I'm gonna make the photo on the top a little bit smaller and I'm gonna remove four of those hearts because generally hearts are not often used as rating. So in this case a heart should be simply an icon to add it to favorites and for that just one of them is gonna be more than enough. Now, because that photo background can be different based on the shoe that you're using, it's really good to have something under the icons. So I'm just going to use the card background with that little shadow that we have, and I'm going to make it 52 by 52, which is a nice looking square, and then I'm going to place it under the arrow. And if you can modify the shape, like in this case, then also use that same color that we had, the, the saturated gray with a hint of blue in it. Okay, now let's duplicate that icon and place it on the right side of the screen. And this is where our add to favorites icon will be. I also dropped both of those buttons a little bit lower. So they are roughly at the same height as the search field is on the previous screen, because we want most of these icons to be occupying the same spot. It really works for consistency. Obviously you should take the notch into account as well and things like that, but we're not gonna go into too much detail here. To make that heart icon also optically similar, I made it a little bit smaller because we want the line thickness of the heart and the arrow to be roughly similar. For detail screen spacing, I want a little bit more white space on the side, so I'm just gonna move everything at 24 points from the left edge. Now I'm gonna also align the text box with the description the same way, so it's 24 points from every side. So let's move it to the left a bit and enlarge it a bit, but it doesn't matter if it breaks like that. This is actually good. And I'm gonna slightly increase the font size and also use that same font color that we had before, which is a little bit of gray, but we can add a little bit of brightness to it. So the visual hierarchy actually shows here. There is a color selector there, but I think it needs a label. So I'm just gonna duplicate this text and add a label. And obviously in the perfect world, you probably should also have a size selector as well, like a little drop down that could be either next to it or underneath that. But since this design didn't have one, I'm not gonna add it. So I'm just gonna write in choose color as the label and then move those colors towards that so they form a group. To show which one is selected, I'm gonna add a little check mark inside. So I'm just gonna use the pen tool holding the shift key at 45 degrees and I'm gonna create two lines, one a little bit longer than the other. This is the simple way. I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker and then work on the roundness of both the edges and the end points. This is pretty easy and you can find it in any design tool. Okay, time for the button. And I'm gonna make it wider, definitely. The text can be a little bit smaller and for the background of the button, I'm gonna use a gradient coming from the blue we have. On one end, it's gonna be a little bit lighter and on the other, it's gonna be a little bit darker and I want the gradient to be diagonal. We're not gonna add a shadow here because I think that this is actually enough. Some additional alignment tweaks, which is basically moving things closer or further apart together so they form better logical groups visually. And once you have that done, you can still play around with some fonts. For example, the price is a little bit too big. And then next to it, it's all about making the proper alignments. And there we are. Of course, this app could have been done a lot better still. There is still a lot more room for improvement, especially with the icons and some of the selectors. But my goal was to show you that in a little over 10 minutes, you can actually have a pretty drastic change from the previous app. So these changes can help you a lot. And if you go with basically keeping the proper alignment and proper shading and simple basic colors, you're gonna be just fine. Thanks for watching.